In this video from the University of Michigan, we demonstrate our technique of flexible uroscopic stone dusting for renal stones using multi-cavity high-power holmium lasers. Dusting is the use of high-frequency and low-pulse energy laser settings to ablate stones into sub-millimeter fragments. Recent survey data published from our group demonstrated that use of dusting technique has become increasingly popular among urologists. In particular, more than 30% of respondents in a worldwide survey of endourologists reported using high-power multi-cavity homium lasers. The aims of this video are to demonstrate our technique of uroscopic stone dusting for renal stones using multi-cavity high-power homium lasers. To emphasize the concepts of nudging and herding to displace renal stones into upper pole calyces to aid with better post-procedural drainage. And to introduce the new technique of pop dusting to ablate stones rapidly into fine powder. We used a 100 watt or 120 watt homium laser from Luminous. The 120 watt system permits dual lithotripsy modes of fragmentation and dusting which allows for instantaneous switch from one laser setting to the other without the need to put the system on standby. It also allows for surgeon specific settings as shown here where dusting settings can be specified according to the hard or soft stone composition. The first case is a patient with a 1.4 cm renal pelvic stone with a Hounsfield unit of 1300. We begin by nudging the stone with the flexible uroscope into an upper pole location. Dusting is the use of high frequency and low pulse energy laser settings to ablate stones into sub-millimeter fragments. We begin dusting technique using a 200 slim-lined smooth tip fiber at settings of 0.3 joules times 70 hertz using the P120 Holmium laser. We utilize a dancing technique where the tip of the fiber is brushed back and forth across the stone surface so that it is broken down layer by layer. To do this, the scope is advanced and withdrawn rapidly, allowing the fiber to interrogate the surface of the stone, targeting those parts that project forward. The fiber is also directed to the periphery of the stone to allow small fragments to chip off. The settings for dusting depend on the hardness of the stone. With the 120 watt system, rates of up to 80 Hz are possible for very high frequency dusting. Towards the end of the procedure, we increase the energy to 0.5 joules times 80 Hz, similar to a popcorning methodology but utilizing lower pulse energy and very high frequencies. We have found this results in very fine fragments and we call this hybrid between dusting and popcorning, pop dusting. At the end, the stone is broken into dust-like fragments of less than one millimeter. The second case is a patient with a 1.4 centimeter renal pelvic stone with a Hounsfield unit of 1100. Again, we begin by nudging the stone to an upper pole location as this helps with better post-procedural drainage. We used a Flexiva ball tip 200 laser fiber from Boston Scientific. After pulverizing the stone using dancing and chipping methods, with this time a setting of 0.2 joules times 50 hertz, we fragmented the stones further with settings of 0.5 joules times 80 hertz. Firing the laser at very high frequencies induces a whirlpool-like phenomenon which displaces the stones. Fragmentation occurs as a result of direct laser ablation and collisions between the stone fragments. When using this technique, it's important to keep the fiber away from the urothelium to avoid tissue injury. At the end, the stone is broken into dust-like fragments of less than one millimeter. A urethral stent is then placed to maintain patency of the ureter for a short period while the debris passed spontaneously over two weeks. A post-operative CT scan revealed the patient was completely stone-free. The third case is a patient with a 1.5 centimeter renal pelvic stone. Despite using a dusting approach, some stones may break up into large fragments. If that happens, we herd these fragments into a dependent calyx. By using the scope to move and push the stones into dependent calyceal pockets, the stones can be dusted more effectively. The ball-shaped tip allows the fiber to track through a fully deflected scope without damaging the scope. However, it's not uncommon for the ball tip to degrade with increased energy usage as shown here. One word of caution is that high pulse energy settings are more damaging to the fiber tip. 
In general, we find 0.2 joules to be the most optimal pulse energy setting that prolongs the life of the fibre when dusting. In this case, at the end, we retrieved any fragments that were not optimally broken down. Determining the optimal laser setting for dusting is a balance between the hardness of the stone, the stone size, its location, and the fibre size being used. The hardness and sensitivity of a stone for a dusting technique can be assessed in advance using the Hounsfield unit. When dusting a large stone, as the stone is debulked, the repetition rate may have to be reduced in order to avoid excessive retropulsion. Finally, the location of the stone is an important factor as it is far easier to dust stones in a Kayla seal pocket. In general, we prefer a 200 laser fibre size as this causes less retropulsion. We start at an initial setting of 0.2 joules times 50 hertz and adjust thereafter according to the stone properties. Often as the stone is debulked, the hertz has to be reduced. For prolonged dusting, the laser fibre lasts longest if set at 0.2 joules. Towards the end, a popcorning, or if using a 120 watt system, a pop dusting technique is able to pulverise the stone into fine powder. In conclusion, high power homium lasers have opened a new frontier in ureteroscopic laser lithotripsy by permitting a dusting approach which ablates stones into fine powder. Strategies that optimise fragmentation and post procedural drainage when using a dust te technique include nudging and herding stones into upper pole calices. And finally, pop dusting is a new laser setting which can ablate stones rapidly into fine powder.